Om Sam Sarasvati Namaha Namaste Namaste. This evening on page 378, Chandi Maki Arati. Be victorious, Jai Chandi. O oh, goddess who tears apart thought, be victorious. You take away all fear and illuminate the intensity of reality. Be victorious. The intensity, the bhava, the bhavana of all things, the intensity of reality, of existence, of being, you illuminate. Be victorious. You are the essence of Satchit Ananda, Shukmoya, you are the truth, consciousness, a manifestation of happiness, the form of pure conscious being. You are the beautiful and the eternal, the beauty of eternal truth. Beyond infinite goodness, you rule over the gods, be victorious. The beginning without beginning, unseverable, motionless and indestructible, bright, infinite, imperceptible, unborn, the great collection of bliss, be victorious. Changeless, holy one, sinless, bearer of individual phenomena, created by Brahma, Sustained by Vishnu and Shiva, who dissolves this creation, be victorious. You are the wife of Brahma, Sarasvati. You are the wife of Vishnu, Rama, Lakshmi. The wife of Shiva, Shiva, Uma, the great measurement of consciousness. You are the knowledge of primordial existence, the mother who gives birth to all. Be victorious. You are the consciousness of the subtle light of wisdom that merges with the ultimate. This is pretty good stuff. You are the doer of all. You are Sita, the pure white one, the queen of the multitude. You are Radha, the ruler of the senses. You are the desire of the wish-fulfilling tree. Taking away all obstructions, be victorious. You are the ten branches of knowledge, Das Mahavidya, and the nine relievers of Durga, of, of difficulties, the nine Durgas. All the scriptures present you, the eight mothers of union. Various are the forms that you assume. Be victorious. You are the inhabitant of the highest residence. Yours is the greatest beauty. You wander about the cremation grounds dancing to the rhythmic music. Be victorious. You assume every form. You are the creator. You are the protector. You are the transformer. Be victorious. Jai Chandi Jai Jai. You mesmerize the gods and moonies when you present your radiant beauty. We can't think of anything else. Everybody is mesmerized. All are helpless seeing your dreadful appearance at the time when you assume the form of total dissolution. Be victorious. When you do that Mahapraloy and you are the only one in existence, then all are helpless. We don't exist. We only exist in you. You pervade love and ease. You are extremely eminent. You are the brilliance of the jewel. You are the invisible existence. Be victorious. You reside in the Muladhar Chakra. You grant the highest attainment in this world. At the appointed time, you are Kali, the remover of darkness. And the low, as the Lotus One, you grant blessings. Be victorious. You are every form of energy, the eternal, undistinguishable essence, the vibration that exposes change and distinction, and the spotlessly pure three Vedas. Be victorious. For so many days we have been in pain, Ma. <clears throat> Ma, a long time. We're not comfortable. 
We are bound by adversities and suffering. We are negligent and insincere. But still, we are your children. Be victorious. Endow us with your very own nature, Mother. Turn us into you. Give us your mercy, O merciful Mother, Greek Makoro. Give us the refuge of your lotus feet. Be victorious. Be victorious, O goddess who tears apart thought. Be victorious, you take away all fear and illuminate the intensity of reality. Be victorious. Jai Chandi Jai Chandi. And an RT, of course, is a presentation. It's a dance of devotion, a presentation of all the objects of offering. And we have purified them, we offer them, and then we hold them up and show them to you, dance with you, and let you dance with us. And our, uh, we, it's also called a dance in celebration. It's a festival of joy. And that is the Arati. And now, Devi Moyi, the manifestation of the goddess, the, manifest, the Moyi of Devi. Uh, oh, mother, is there any vibration that is not your song? Your body is the form of all sound. You are Bach Devi, all vibrations, all sounds. In cognizing your imminent form of divinity, my mind has moved beyond thoughts and re reflections. That is, in cognizing the imminent, I perceive the transcendent. Good stuff. In cognizing the imminent, I perceive the transcendent. In looking at the vyakti, I see the shamashti. In looking at one individual form of divinity, I perceive the infinite beyond conception. O oh, destroyer of all obstructions, granter of welfare, recognizing you as such, as she who gives birth to all that moves and moves not, even these brief moments of my appearance in life should be spent without other thoughts in singing your praises, chanting your names, and offering of my devotion. Hey guys, what else do you want to do? We're here for a short time. We're here for 70, 80, 90, 100, 150 years. We're going to wear this body. It's a blink in the eye of Brahma. It's a, it's a chana, it's a muhurt, it's a, it's such a small time, my brief appearance in manifested existence while I wear this body. Well, what else do I want to do? What do I want to accomplish while I'm here? I, I should spend my time without any other thought in singing your praises, in chanting your names, and offering you my devotion. That's all. Hey, you got another agenda? Please send me an email. <laughs> now comes Bhagavati Stuti. This is a song of praise to the Supreme Goddess. And it says, Prata Smari Smarami. And remember, Prata means in the morning. It means the foremost. It means the first thing I got to do. It means I remember the highest and the foremost. It's got so many levels of meaning. It's just a magnificent poetical statement. So in the morning, I remember the foremost. Hey, great poets seldom disagree. <laughs> Nature of philosophy. She, he, he, I'm doing it in the morning at, at the first, at the pratha. And I'm remembering the pratha. Who is the foremost? And I am doing it because she is the highest and the greatest and she's pretty cool. Ah. So in the morning I remember the foremost who shines like the autumn moon, wearing a shining necklace and earring studded with fine rudraksha seeds and jewels. Uh, she holds divine weapons in her thousand arms of excellent blue. Hey, that lady's looking a little bluish today. Uh, are you bluish? Ah, oh, Kali Kali. 
She gives divine life. Remember, hey, they, they, she, even though she has a thousand hands, she, she's depicted as it with 18 arms. And she's Kale, Kali Durga Namo Nama. We bow to her in the form of Kali, we bow to her in the form of Durga, we bow to her in the form of Mahalakshmi, Mohishashur Mardini. So she's got a thousand arms, they're all one. And she's shown with 18 arms, or in this case, 10 arms. Because uh, she's looking a little bluish today. Uh, she gives divine life. The soles of her feet are red like a lotus, but she won't take off her socks so you can see them. <laughs> Wait a minute, I, I did this translation. <laughs> I'm not making it up. She is the highest divinity. In the morning, Prathar Namami, in the morning, I bow down to the foremost. <laughs> Isn't that magnificent? It, it just it comes again and again. In, in the morning, Pratha, I bow to Pratha. <laughs> she who is the supreme, the highest, the foremost. Uh, uh, the first thing I want to do in the day is bow to she who is the greatest of the day. And that is to the slayer of the great ego. Anger and passion, the destroyer of all negativities of duality led by self-conceit. She's in all three episodes. One girl, she gets around. Pratha. She is, she's Pratha, she's the foremost. She's my lady. I, I, in the morning, I bow to the foremost, the highest, who is in the first episode in this middle episode and in the uh, Uttra Charitra in the last episode. I have another episode. Her graceful activities delude even Brahma, the creative consciousness, Indra, the rule of the pure, Rudra, the reliever of sufferings and otherwise beings. She throws everyone into Maya. Brahma, Vishnu to a plate of grass. Everybody goes into her maya, and all otherwise being, she is Chandi. She who tears apart thought, the image of divinity to all the gods in so many forms. In the morning, I log the foremost. Hey, get this, the first time I remembered the foremost, the second time I bowed to the foremost, and the third time I extol, I laud, I praise, I... Enjoy singing to the foremost, the higher than the highest, the Prata. The fulfiller of all the desires for those who worship. What would you desire if you worship? If I'm worshiping you, then all I desire is you. I want to pay attention to you exclusively. You just took away all the other desires. The creator of all the worlds and remover of all difficulties. Take away all the bondage from the world of objects and relationships. Bandan Muktakoro. And bring us to the pure, intuitive vision of the Supreme Consciousness that resides beyond Maya. <laughs> Anything else you want to desire? Any other desires you may have? They're all completely fulfilled. You remember her in the morning. You bow down to her in the morning. You laud her, extol her, praise her in the morning. Early in the morning, round the break of day, I ask the Lord, help me find my way. Why, what acting? <laughs> Bowing down with devotion. The reliever of difficulties, the exposer of goodness, the cause of peace, infinite consciousness, beloved by knowers of consciousness, she who motivates and guides the three worlds, always I bow to her and I am bowing to goodness herself. Welfare. Radiant beauty, completely pure, without limitations, the ultimate limitation, the Lord of the universe, the mother of the universe, to you, Chandi, to the energy 
unity that tears apart thought, I bow in submission. She is composed of all the gods. Remember in chapter 2, we all put our lights together, made one goddess out of it. Removes all sickness and fear. Brahma, Maheshwar, and Vishnu bow down to her, and I do too. I always bow down to the energy of infinite goodness. The dwelling place of knowledge and also the knowledge which begets humility because Vindhya is not only knowledge but she is the knowledge. Satya, Vidya, Vinay, Bhavati. The true knowledge confers humility. So the dwelling place of knowledge, residing in knowledge, resident in the place of divine illumination, the cause of union, the knower of union, to the energy that tears apart thought, we constantly bow with every thought and activity. We are bowing to her, the mother of the supreme consciousness, the goddess who is the supreme consciousness, beloved by the supreme consciousness, we always bow to Durga, the reliever of difficulties, who takes aspirants across the difficult sea of objects and their relationships. Remember, every time you have two objects, you have a relationship. Even if I'm relating myself, who is here in Napa, to a person standing in the middle of uh, 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 Peking, of Beijing, <laughs> excuse me, dating myself. At least I got a date. <laughs> uh, the, I have a relationship to even the person in the middle of Beijing. Uh, maybe a very far, long distance relationship, <laughs> but I'm sure she is receiving the vibrations that I'm sending out into the atmosphere. So every object where it has a relationship to every other object. And she takes aspirants across the ocean of objects and relationships. Om. Om Sam Saraswati Namaha. And that completes the Chandi part. Let's see if there are any questions. We have a question from Ambika. Namaste, Ambika. Namaste. Can you please explain the symbolism of all the items we hold during Arati and is the order specific for a particular reason? Yes. Uh, we start with incense, we create a uh, control of the olfactory uh, sense and we uh, make an offering of all the most magnificent fragrances from the universe. And then we offer five lights, which show that my, my five senses are filled with light, and only I see your light as I perceive this universe acting and interacting through my Gyan Indriyas, five Gyan Indriyas. And then we offer camphor, which is the blazing purity of, of devotion. And my single light is filled with devotion. My third eye is filled with the blazing purity of pure devotion of total absorption. And then we offer a conch shell which contains all vibrations. And then we offer a, 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 a cloth uh, which covers your modesty and makes me humble and makes me a humble servant to protect your modesty and to protect you from the elements. <coughs> and then we offer a chummer and that's a fly whisk and I want to whisk away any pests from your minds and, and just like I want you to whisk away all the pests that will come and bug me. Uh, and then I'm going to give you a fan and keep you cool and be, I don't let you get upset. I'm just going to keep fanning you. Tanda hook. Uh, <laughs> don't proceed the hook. Uh, just keep fanning until she uh, loses all her uh, uh, emotion. And then I'll offer her a mirror so I can show her the perfect reflection of her perfect devotee. I become you. And then I offer you a flower, which is the symbol of beauty and delicacy. And it's the delicate symbol of fragrant beauty, enhanced the delicacy of the beauty enhanced by my love. Please, 
Treat my devotion like you would treat a very delicate flower. And those are the primary objects that we offer. Now, you've seen me raise a pot of water, and you can see me lift weights, and you can see me do exercise, and you can see Boo Boo Baba doing the Uchi Koo. <laughs> Everybody's got their own style, their own stuff, and there's no limitation. But these are the primary objects with which we perform the arati, and that's why we use those. And they are performed, they are offered in the order as prescribed by scripture, because at the end I'm going to say, hey mom, they did it this way and you gave them the blessing. I'm doing the same activity in the same way, with the same bhavana, with the same vishwash, with the same faith and trust that you're going to do for me what you did for them. So you gave them the blessing, come on, I'm a good boy, I'm trying. You could give me a little blessing, please. We have a related question from Nanda. Namaste Nandama! What is the symbolism of the pot of water in the RIT? The pot of water? Oh, that's the heaviest pot you've ever lifted. <laughs> I mean, it's a big pot, but oh, oh, it, there are many meanings to it. One is I'm training, uh, and I'm, I am, I am training. I, I grew into old age gracefully, and I didn't rel realize it until I looked back that I'm already an old man, uh, and I'm preparing to lift it like I did in the old days of the 108 Pradeep. However, more than that, when the left hand is ringing the bell and the right hand is holding a pot of water, which weighs probably about seven kilos, uh, then uh, you keep the right hand completely still and the left hand completely in motion. And there's no connection between the right of stillness and the left of motion. And that becomes a qualified arati. That becomes a qualified offering. Now, spiritually, the symbolism is uh, the container, the contents of the container within the container are the same as the contents outside the container. It's the, the only difference is the container. Now, here we have a container of purity and clarity. All the, off, or the waters of the inner ocean are in this water pot. So you have Varuna is the lord of equilibrium. And in equilibrium, without spilling a drop, I have the stillness and I have the movement and I have the container and I have the contents and I have Gut Akash and Maha Akash. And Gut Akash is contained space and Maha Akash is infinite space. And the quality of the contents is exactly the same. The only difference is the container. I become a container of consciousness inside and out. Inside I'm defined and outside I'm infinite. Take your choice. And that's why I offer a pot of water. We have a question from Swarupananda in Washington. Namaste Swarupananda! Pranam, in the Bhagavati Stuti, what is the significance of our progression from remembering her, to bowing to her, to sing, singing her praise? Oh, it's not necessarily a progression. I'm doing all three all the time. With everything I do, remember the chandi is going on simultaneously. It's not like you put too much and too little in balance and they stay there forever. It's not like you cut down the great ego and all his uh, repus and all his negativities and then you never have to deal with your ego again. It's not like you deal with self-conceit and self-deprecation and you, you, you don't have to worry about too much and too little. They're all going on at the same time. The whole chandi pot is an allegory for life. It's a snapshot of life. Which part do you want to talk about? Do you want to talk about my Tamil guna right now? Or do you want to talk about my Raja guna right now? Or do you want to talk about my Satya guna right now? They're all three present. 
So that's the same in the Chandi, in the, in the uh, first episode we're talking about the balance of too much and too little and how much do you need. And the second episode we're talking about your goals and your ego and all the limitations that keep you, preclude you from achieving the highest. And in the third episode we invoke Saraswati, Maha Saraswati to come and to give us the knowledge by which we can discriminate what is self-conceit and what are self deprecation and what uh, what are the appropriate judgments of my situation now they're all going on simultaneously so it's not necessarily pro a progression although you can say look I remember you and therefore I'm empowered to bow down to you I bow down to you and therefore that empowers me to laud you to extol your praises to extol your grace so the first thing I'm going to do in every puja is Srimad Mahaganadipataye Namaha I'm going to bow down to you. First thing. I, before I can bow down, i got to remember you. So the first thing I is Pratasmarami, Pratarnamami, Pratarpajami. That would be the progression if you want to do it logically. We have a question from Devananda in Seattle. Namaste, Devananda! Pranam, if we are doing worship in a quiet environment, what are the best adjustments to make to performing arati so that we can reduce the volume but still gain the maximum efficiency, the maximum effect? Well, obviously, it's not about volume, it's about focus. It just depends on you, Devananda. How focused are you? Are you really listening to what you're saying? Or are you saying something and watching another movie inside? Is your mind going off uh, to London, Paris, Rome, and New York? Or other places? Or is your mind really here? So now if you're in New York, I gotta call loudly so that you'll be able to hear me. Even if you're in New Jersey, I'll talk so loudly that you can hear me in New Jersey. But if you're sitting in the Davy Munder, I could look into your eyes and whisper in your ear mm -hmm. and you know what I want to say. So Devananda, it's just a question of, it's bhavana. How intensely are you listening to what you're saying? Are you really hearing it or are you just uh, mouthing the words? Yes, please. We have a question from Reka in Sacramento. Namaste Reka Ma! Namaste Tridipa! Namaste. Why does she want to gracefully delude Brahma, Indra, Rudra, and other wise beings? Oh, she loves it. The only way she can have a creation is deluding us. If we weren't deluded, there would be no duality. The, the very concept of duality means delusion. We forgot we're one. And now we're acting like we're two. So Reka and Tridipa, we are one. That's the reality. Brahma Satya Jagat Mitya. Uh, the, the reality is Brahma is Satya. Jagat is Mitya. So we're all, anybody who sees something different from themselves is deluded. Immediately upon perception. All I got to do is say Tat. And there's delusion. So that's how she deludes Brahma by saying, go ahead and create. <laughs> she deludes Vishnu, says you protect. And she deludes Shiva. I, Brahma saw Saraswati and started to put on his, his running shoes. Uh, he started sprinting down the, uh, the racing down the road. Uh, Devi Bhagavatam, uh, chapter 7. <laughs> Vishnu saw Brinda and he didn't hold back too much. He got deluded too. Shiv saw Mohini. He got deluded too. So, that's how they got deluded. How about you? I saw Srima! <laughs> Believe 
me. I got deluded too. <laughs> but it's a good delusion. I mean, it's, it's fun. It's all right. I got, I got deluded. I don't mind confessing, but it, it's true. I got deluded too. If we're in duality, we're in delusion. <laughs> yes, please. We have a question from Max in Spokane, Washington. Yes, namaste, Max. Namaste. How can we increase our focus on the arati or anything else? My mind never seems to want to sit down with me and sing about the goddess. Well, you got to make a deal with your mind. I mean, it's a tough negotiation, but you got to make a deal, Max. I mean, we're all we're all worships. We're all businessmen. Now we got a. Uh, a negotiation going on between I and my mind. And I'm so talking about I being my soul. My soul has got to negotiate with my mind. Mind, I want you to cooperate with me. The mind says, oh, why would I do that? <laughs> I'm in control. You see whatever I think about. Who's the thinker? Cogito ergo sum. You think, therefore you are. He has to create love. Oh. All right. Thank you, Mom. Next. <laughs> we have a question from Joseph in Illinois. Yes, Joseph, namaste. Pranam. When I chant the Chandi, my mind isn't concerned with the English translation. Is it okay to focus purely on getting lost in the Sanskrit? Yep. <laughs> it's okay. In fact, that's the goal. <laughs> you don't want to think your way through your love affair, Joseph. You want to feel your way. So when you get lost and you can't find you, that means that she's taken over. That means mine shut up for a little bit and the soul is illuminated. That's the pure love that Sri Ma is talking about. When you love so much that you forget yourself, you forget your beloved, and all that is, is we. One. There's no me, there's no you, there's no us. There's one. It's beyond thought. It's a priori knowledge. You know it only through meditation, through intuition, through pure intuitive perception. That's what we've been calling, we translate it as pure intuitive perception. Because that's the only way you can know it. But Joseph, you never saw your love affair. You never saw any of your other emotions. Let go. It's not a thing. It's not a thought. You got to feel it. Yes, please. We have a question from Ambika. Namaste, Ambika. Namaste. What is the difference between singing the full arati and just singing Jai Ma, Jai Ma, or singing the shorter or longer versions of the closing prayers? Is it a simpler way to accomplish the same devotion? No. No, it's a shortcut. Shortcuts do not accomplish the same thing. The, the, the journey is... Is the, the process is what we're striving to enhance. It, it, we're not trying to arrive at any place. We're trying to realize a, a present reality. So you take shortcuts because you don't have enough time or you don't have enough energy or you got other things knocking on the door. You got to go and pay attention to them, but at least you're doing something. Now then you take a shortcut. But if you've got the time, if you've got the mind, if you've got this, the environment, then do the whole thing as much as you can without distraction. It's not the same. If I say the mantra once or I say it 108 times, it's not the same. If I say it one time fully absorbed with no other thought and only I can see and think of you when I say the mantra, then it worked then I have no need for any further tapas. But God knows that we're not there. <laughs> you can't just sit down and say, I'm going to think of nothing now. <laughs> you think of something. Uh, how can I think of nothing? Well, I'll think of something that will lead me to nothing. I'll think of, uh, mm, 
I think of all the enlightened beings that sat down and thought of nothing. I'll go to the kitchen and talk about enlightenment. <laughs> there is no way you can do that. You have to say it 108 times or 109 times in order to say it once with pure intuitive perception. And maybe you have to say it a thousand times or ten thousand times or a lot. Hey, well, who's counting? Maybe you have to say it for the rest of your life or lifetimes together. And then you'll say it that one time <laughs> and you'll know what we're talking about in saying pure intuitive perception. You're there. You're totally there. I mean, you're not just partially there. You're not approaching there. You're not, oh, I've got it. Look at me. Yay. No, you're there. Fully absorbed in pure intuitive perception is not a concept. You know it's a priori knowledge. You know when you're there. You know when you've got it. And as soon as you say, I've got it, you're there again. And then you don't got it anymore. You can't have it. It's not an attainment. It's not an achievement. It's a realization. All we can talk about is what we did step by step in order to come closer and closer and closer to this realization. Anybody else can tell you nitty nitty. I was looking at the Indian newspaper yesterday and every sadhu came to America to fundraise was the great enlightened master. Really? Yeah. Wow. The great enlightened master has come to make a donation and uh, I need more rooms in my ashram. <laughs> they are coming for enlightenment. Yeah, they're, yeah, they want to enlighten your pocketbooks a little bit. <laughs> they're a little too heavy. <laughs> Write me a check and we'll en enlighten you a little bit. Uh, so the, the objective is to put yourself into that bhavana, into that feeling, into that absorption, where into the conducive environment and mind where you can have that moment where it all stops. And you have that pure intuitive perception. That's what we're shooting for. No, Ambika, you can't, you, you can take all the shortcuts you want. That isn't it. No, no, no. That's not it. It, it, what is it is the more I do, the more I grow, the closer I come, the more I let go. One day I'll just let go quite naturally. Why, Omega, why are you not thinking about your name? Think about your name all the time and you will get everything. Mother of the universe, wake up, wake up us. <laughs> To your divine grace. <laughs> yes, please. We have a question from Sadatmananda in Washington. Namaste, Sadatmananda. Namaste. Devi Moyi says, even these brief moments of my appearance in life should be spent without other thoughts and singing your praises, chanting your names, and offering my devotion. There is no room, there is no place for extraneous desires. Yet even to those who are devoted to her, the mind would entertain other desires. Is it a lack of devotion that is the root of this, or are we always born with crocodiles on our heels? We are always born with crocodiles on our heels. You just said it perfectly. Uh, when you took birth, you came to birth because you had some unfinished business. You had some karma that was outstanding. And in order to purify that karma, we have to complete in some way all of those desires. You either complete them by fulfilling them, or you complete them by renouncing them, or you complete them by forgetting about them. Those are the, uh, the, the alternatives. If you fill your present with karma yoga, with the actions which bring you into union, then you'll forget about all the other desires and they'll go away. 
How many, how long will I stand knocking on your door, Sadat Mananda, until I get the hint that you don't want to let me in? If I appear on your doorstep and knock on the door and you don't answer, well, after a while my hand is going to hurt and I'm going to get frustrated and I'm going to get fed up and tired of waiting for you and I'm going to go home. It's the same thing with the desires. Don't knock on your door. And if you, oh, hello, desire, come on in. <laughs> Yeah, sure, let's give up all of our dharma and go out and party. <laughs> or you could say, sorry, desire. There's no one home right now. I'm busy. I got a sudden kalpa. I'm going to sing the chandipat. I'm going to read her praises and sing about her and think about her. And I don't have time to pay attention to you. So, if you want, you can go away. If you want, you can stand outside the door. If you want, you can try to come back another time. But I'm not paying attention to you. That's my son, Kalpa. And in that way, in that attitude, those desires will quit bugging you. They will quit bugging you, just like I'm not going to stay the whole day standing on your porch knocking on your door. I'll knock once, I'll knock twice, I'll knock three times. And then I'll look for a window to break. <laughs> or I'll go home. <laughs> yes, please. We have a question from Moshami in Boulder. Namaste, Moshami. Namaste, Siddhar. Pranam. One of the verses in Devi Moi says, There is no vibration which is not her song. But often, in a strange hotel room during a business trip, I feel vib vibrations which are not her song. An immediate chandipat helps, but often there isn't an opportunity. How can I efficiently establish my own inner vibration in her song in any such strange place? Mushumi, you want to create that spandana. You want to create that inner vibration. You want to breathe in the mantras and breathe out the mantras and have them vibrating from your toes to your ears. You want to feel them all the way through. And the only way I know how to do that is to use the nad shakti, the, the subtle energy of the mantras, and chant them from the bottom up. And let that vibration permeate your entire being so that you forget about all the external vibrations. You want to become her. And that's the only way I can suggest that you do it. Believe me, we've been in a few hotel rooms ourselves. Wherever mom goes, the first thing she does is make an altar. No matter where. We go to the Ritz, we go to the, to, to the Dharmshala. She makes an altar. First thing. Uh, and, and it could be a simple altar. Mom's altars are pretty complex. I mean, she, she, puts, she, she puts down a cloth and a candle and an incense and a picture and a light and, a, and, and she puts flowers and, and malas and starts decorating. I mean, she can't, she's fun to travel with. There's lots of baggage. <laughs> and she makes an altar with shiny brass and copper and all kinds of stuff. So she's got her temple wherever she goes. Could be a simple altar, it could be a complex altar. It's as fancy as you want to get. Then she sits down and does puja with the regularity of a water wheel. <laughs> I mean, you could set your time to face by the, uh, by the way she does the puja. She doesn't miss her puja, no matter what we're doing. We could be cutting open her hand, we could be doing what any operation, we could be cooking for a hundred people, or whatever she's doing, she gets up and she does the puja. With the regularity of a water wheel. So it doesn't matter where she is, she just sits down, puts down the altar, fixes everything up, decorates it, and does the puja. And she's not ready to start her day until the puja is complete. Uh, these are some of the tricks of the trade that you could use in order to keep that vibration with you all the time. I use a different technique. I, I chant loudly. 
<laughs> I chant louder than all the voices in my head. I chant loud enough so that I can feel the vibration and I keep it as subtle as I possibly can so that that vibration is continually moving in the paradigm of my reality. I feel that vibration all through. It's like uh, an abhaya yoga. Or uh, in, uh, uh, in Buddhist terms, they call it a vipassana technique, where you feel the sensation and you feel the vibration, and then you move that vibration all through your body, and you move it down from the muladhar to the swadhisthana to the manipur to anahata, vishuddha, adhyabhya chakra, bring it out to sahasrara, and let that vibration flow and create an aura about you, and then you're chanting the chant. You make that vibration move all the way through inside you. So various techniques that you will use in order to purify that hotel room, they, they won't know what hit them. They won't know that it was a hotel room. The gods will come, the goddess will be there. Where this chandipat is well recited, there my presence will constantly abide. We have a question from Nanda. Namaste, Nanda Ma. Thank you for explaining the Chandi to us. You have asked us to establish financial goals so that we may never be a burden in the pretext of leading a spiritual life. But how do we know how much is enough given the fact of inflation and all the unknowns? It seems then that we can never let go of worldly activities to live a life of doing sadhana. Please help me understand. Well, Nanda Ma, there is a certain base earn out that you want to establish as your goal. Your responsibilities right now are very quantifiable. You could find what is the need for your startup expenses for when you want to start up and how much would you need for your maintaining expenses when you want to bring it down and then you can rise up and bring it down according to the circumstances of your situation. For example, if you think that you could live in, a, in an ashram like the Devi Mandir for one or two thousand dollars a month and do a little bit of seva in the ashram and do sadhana during the day, then what do you need to earn a thousand or two thousand dollars a month? Add your car in there, say it's three thousand dollars a month, so you need thirty thousand dollars a year. Uh, that's different than needing a hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. That's different from needing $15 million. It's quantifiable. It's attainable. You can reach for that. You can say, gee, you know, if I checked out for, a, for three years, how much startup capital would I need when I came back to this world? Would I need $10,000? Well, that would be... That'd be at least the first month and the last month's rent and, and a new suit and a car and some gasoline and something to, uh, with which to sustain myself until I found a job. Or would I need $20,000? Then I could take care of my mom, my dad, my cat. My, the, it's quantifiable. Make a budget. Then I need $2,000 a month for, or $3,000 a month. I need $36,000 a year for three years, and $90,000 plus $10,000. I need $100,000, I'm ready to go. It's not that hard. I mean, you, then you could say, okay, I'm moving into the, to that kind of an environment for three years. I'm going to do Sahasra Chandi Yagya. I'm going to do some Seva for Srima. I'm going to do some Seva for the Ashram. I'll make the website run. I'll make Swami jump. And then the rest of your time. There are 24 hours in a 24-hour day. You can achieve 25 hours of efficiency. And then you get ahead. You make a budget and you, you understand what are your needs. They're not that. It's not rocket science. And that's why you, you don't make it complicated. You could have done already. You could do right now. You may be able to do it in the future. These are decisions that each one of you will make. Yes, 
We have a question from Laura in Vermont. Namaste, Laura in Vermont! How can we visualize, let alone comprehend, the Divine Mother in her form of having a thousand arms? Well, you start counting. Mm -hmm. Just start. Just count as many as you can until you lose count, Laura. And when you lose count, then, you, well, I know she's got more, but I can't count that high. I can't see all her thousand arms. Uh, I, I, but keep counting. <laughs> keep, and count them as long as you can and then uh, just look at her. And that will be sufficient. You don't have to conceive her with exactly a thousand arms. Count as many of them as you can count and then stop counting and stop conceiving her and stop, start intuiting her. Yes, please. We have a question from Srini in Bengaluru. Namaste, Mr. Srini Baba! Namaste, Swamiji. We know we can't move our legs and knees, but is minimizing the movements of the body from the abdomen upward necessary to reduce the movements of the mind? Yes! Excellent question. Mr. Srini Baba, every movement of the body is a reflection of the movement of mind. If you're bobbing and weaving, if you're rocking and rolling, if you're doing all kinds of funny things and having kriyas and dancing the hoochie coo, <laughs> you're not sitting in the same stillness. Now, there are a few places in the chandi where it's just so romantic you can't hold yourself back. And you could touch those places of the nyas and establish and feel her right there until you just say the name and it, it feels itself. It feels for you. Or you could... Uh, 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 there are certain things where all the goddesses enter into the being of the goddess and there's one true existence in this world. Or there's a, a part where she says, Yomei Sangrame, whoever defeats me in the battle, whoever sees the force of the universe as one within me, whoever gives me all his self conceit he will be my husband. There are some places where you just can't help, where he punches her on the heart and she stops him with her palm. I, it, it, it makes sense that you act out all the parts of every character. And there are other places where it just holds you in spellbound, in one pointed, intuitive, pure intuitive perception, in one pointed intuitive cognition where you are her and you can feel her vibration rising within you and falling with you and you're doing the pranayama and you're reciting the mantras from the exhalation and then you do the pranayama and you exhale the mantras and you've got it coming and you've got it going and the vibration is flowing and you can feel her presence within. Yes, please. We have a question from Vivekananda. Namaste, Vivek! Namaste. Can you explain the difference between egocentric thought about personal accomplishments and believing in one's own effort? If she's doing it all, where do I fit in? <clears throat> Am I even real? Yep, you are. <laughs> and you're a realist as well. <laughs> uh, and the reality of your realism, Vivek, is that you are privileged to be the servant of the Divine Mother. And as a good tool in the hands of a master craftsman, you are privileged to be on the cutting edge just to do the greatest efficiency that you can possibly perform in order to demonstrate the sincerity of your devotion. You want to do it right, you want to do it with love. You want to do the best job you possibly can. And you guys are doing it. I know you are. But we want to do it better. Because I want my, my driver of this car to know she's got a good car. I'm a 
I am a Beamer. Uh, if anybody needs a BMW coupe, I'm tired of being cooped up. And I'm just the, I'm the fanciest. I'm a Rolls Royce. Of all the cars, I am the finest and the highest. I am the, of all the tools, I'm the best tool in your toolbox. Of all the houses you are the master of, I am, I keep my house clean. I am, I really love you. And I really want to demonstrate to you the sincerity of my love. I want to do your work as best as I possibly can. I really do. I'm trying to the best of my capacity to pay attention to all the things that require attentiveness. I want to do my puja, I want to do my pot, I want to do my homa, I want to do my karma yoga, I want to do my seva, I want to take care of my ashram, I want to take care of my mom. And I want to provide you with all the resources that you need in order to fulfill your mission in this world. And to that end, I am working with sincerity trying to accomplish the, with the highest degree of efficiency possible all the things that I said I would do. And if you give me a task, I want to write this task has been completed to your satisfaction and put it back on your table so that you know I, you gave me a task and I took your task and I did it quickly, efficiently, without demur, without problem. I, and here it is done. Go ahead, check my work. I have no hesitation to letting you know I did it to the best of my ability. Uh, I, I think that these will be the way that we demonstrate the sincerity of our focus, of our attentiveness. We have a question from Julia. Namaste, Julia Ma! Namaste. In a way, it seems the more we go deeper into our practice of the Chandi, we feel this achiness, bittersweet, it increases, it, it increases our longing for union. Do we continue this way as we go further and deeper? You can. That's a choice that you're making, Julia. I, I, I truly feel myself privileged. I, I, I truly feel myself... Uh, I, I get to do a lot of neat things in my life. Uh, my life has not been boring. And I look around and see all the other guys my age and they're ready for the funny farm. <laughs> or a rocking chair and, and I'm still ready to rock out <laughs> so you know I, I, I'm, I'm pleased with the way she has directed me and guided me and inspired me to become better and better and better I don't feel an achiness I just feel like I want to do the best job I possibly can so I can go on to the next task whether it be doing another puja, or whether it be reading another book, or, or, or writing another book, or writing a website, or writing about finances, or writing about astrology, or writing about anything you want to hear about from me. If you, any one of you has got a question from me that I could possibly research and write a nice thing about, then I want to give you that information and empower you to the extent of my cap capabilities. I want to empower you so you can reach the highest that you can possibly reach for. That's what I'm doing with my life, whatever's left of it. I think I've got another 40, 50 years left to be on this planet. So you're going to be putting up with me for a long, long time. I'm not really slowing down. I just appear to be. We have a question from Sadat Mananda. Yes, Sadat Mananda, namaste. In the Chandima Arati, it says, you pervade love and ease. What does it mean that she pervades ease? Uh, Sukhmaya. Uh, she is, uh, she is, it's ease or comfort or happiness or pleasure or, you know, she's, she gets around this lady. So uh, all the good things that you enjoy uh, is shuk. It, all the pleasures, all the, the uh, you know, we, we talk about suk in relation to duk. And dhuk means uh, I'm pained or I'm, I don't feel good or I, I, I and suk means I'm happy and I feel great. Everything's fine. So it, 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 that uh, we translated it, it was more of a dictionary meaning is ease. It, it is ease, but it's, it's also pleasure, it's also comfort, it's also uh, 
it, oh, nice things. <laughs> yeah, it's all shuki. Uh, ha happy? I said happy. Uh, <laughs> please. We have a question from Sadhana Shakti. Namaste Sadhana Shakti! Pranam. In the movie Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus tells us how to pray. Can you please share with us the best and most efficient way to pray to Chandi Ma? I hope I have. I hope I have. Your whole life will be your prayer. It's not about just saying the mantras or just praying, but it's about living a life of prayer. Living a life consecrated to God. You can be the greatest computer students and you can make the dean's list and you can be Phi Beta Kappa, but it's the attitude with which you do it, which is so important. You could be wealthy and successful in the material world, but it's the attitude with which you carry yourself. That's the prayer. Sadhana and everybody, the whole family. It, remember the spiritual practices are important only in so far as they inspire us to lead a spiritual life. And that means to always be attentive to all the thing, all the details of my life. To pay attention, not just to be a good worker, not just to be a good servant, but to be a good worker and a good servant. And not to be a good wife, and not to be a good lover, and not to be a good friend, or not to, but be all of it. It's about holistic spiritual life. And that's kind of what we're teaching. I hope. I pray. Yes. Uh, I, and that's why I write about finances, and that's why I write about yoga, and that's why we write about all the different various topics that you're going to need in your spiritual life, because uh, your prayer is your life, Sadhana. What we do with our daily rhythm of life. Are people happy to be with us? Are they empowered by our presence? Or are they complaining to be with us? You didn't do that. You didn't do that. Are, are we inspiring shuk moi? Comfort and ease and pleasure and happiness? Or are we inspiring duk and burdens and obligations? Well, what is our life? Are we dancing with a smile on our face or are we moping? Like I'm not enjoying where I'm at. You gotta be here. Nobody asked us. You gotta be here. Now, the choice is ours. Do we want to be here with happiness or do we want to be here with regret? You gotta be here. Nobody said, Sadda, do you want to take birth now? It just happened. Obviously, there was karma and there was this reason and that was that reason. You chose that family and you did that. All right, who cares? What are we going to do now? We're here. It's a choice. You could choose to resent it and reject it and do the minimum and try to get the most and shoulder the burdens and fulfill the obligations and complete your responsibilities and live in Duke. <laughs> Duke <-y -dum. laughs> Or, you can pick up the privileges and you can enjoy the opportunities and you can have a blast and you can fill yourself with energy and fill yourself with inspiration and go out and share your love with the world. That's the prayer. That's the choice, son. And when you make the choice, it's a, that's your, your life is your prayer. I don't want to teach you our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, <laughs> thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. No, Sadhana, thy kingdom hath cometh. <laughs> it's here right now. 
God's kingdom is here. She's the driver, I'm the car. <laughs> Thy will be done, I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> On earth, as it is in heaven, I'm already in heaven. Why am I worried about it? I'm not bound, I'm not seeking liberation. Only people who are bound seek liberation, so I want to be free all the time. Remember, pratasmarami, pratanamami, pratarbajami. I want to remember you, and I want to bow to you, and I want to sing to you, laud you, extol you, and I'll do that with everything I do in life. Om Sam Sarasvati Namaha. Namaste.